Hello everyone. I just wanted to take a few minutes and go over the ICD-10-CM coding guidelines for infectious and parasitic disease coding, as well as give you a couple examples to practice like always. So the codes for any infectious and parasitic disease are the very first part of our ICD-10-CM book. They will start with the character A00 and go through B99. The ICD-10 CM official guidelines for infectious and parasitic diseases are in the front of that section in your tabular list or in the very front of your ICD-10 CM book as well. They are chapter specific guidelines, which are in guide, uh, the coding guideline chapter C1A through 8F1 is where you can find all the infectious and parasitic disease coding guidelines. I wanted to first start talking about when we're coding HIV or AIDS. There are quite a few guidelines to know when we're coding these. The biggest one I wanted to point out first and foremost is we only can code confirmed cases. Now this is different than what we're used to in our general inpatient coding guidelines that tell us we can code probable, possible, likely, suspected, rule out, right? We cannot do that, nor would we want to do that when we're coding AIDS or HIV. So you can only code confirmed cases. Do not assign a patient with B20, uh, the AIDS or HIV related condition code, if it's not confirmed by the physician. Then if a patient is HIV positive, but they don't have any symptoms, so they don't have AIDS or HIV related symptoms, they're just HIV positive, we're gonna code the Z code, Z21. A patient who comes in and has an inconclusive test, HIV test, is R75. Then a patient who has a HIV-related illness is the same as a patient who has AIDS. So HIV can lay dormant and then they can get a, a immunocompromised state, which takes them from HIV to AIDS and that's coded B20, just like AIDS or HIV related conditions. When we're coding HIV in pregnancy, we first want to code pregnancy complicated by, and that code's gonna be zero, or actually a, that's a capital O, it's not the number zero, it's a capital O, 098.7, and then there's gonna be a character on that for the trimester that the pregnancy's in. And then we're gonna also code B20 to show what the pregnancy was complicated by. If a patient's just coming in for an encounter for testing, so maybe they had you know, an exposure to it, or maybe they had an activity that exposed them to that virus, then there's an encounter for testing, which again is another Z code at Z11.4. And then if somebody's coming in just for testing, um, and wants counseling with it, counseling code is the Z71.7. Maybe their test was positive, now they want counseling. Another Z code that we see when we're coding diseases from infections or parasitic diseases are all the resistance to antibiotics. That's becoming more and more common. So if you're coding a condition, maybe our, our patient has pneumonia and they were resistant to amoxicillin or penicillin or whatever it might be. If there's an antibiotic resistance in the, the chart that you're coding, we assign a code for that under category Z16. Another set of guidelines that we have to be cognitive of is sepsis. There's a lot of gray area with sepsis. So it's important that you, the coder, really read sepsis and what defines sepsis. So when we're coding sepsis, if the diagnosis 
is just for sepsis, but we don't know the organism that caused it, we're going to code a category A41.9. If it's severe sepsis, then it's R65.2. So R65.2, then we would show if there is a organ dysfunction with it. When we're sequencing sepsis versus severe sepsis, um, when we're coding severe sepsis, we're going to have the minimum of two codes. We're going to have a code, our first code is going to be for the underlying systemic infection. Then we're going to code the R65.2 for the sepsis. If we're coding a case where the patient has sepsis due to a procedure, so they have a procedure done, say, a week ago, and now they have an infection that's caused sepsis from that procedure, we, we would code the T80.2 for an infection following an infusion, transfusion, injection, whatever the procedure was. And then we're going to code the secondary code for the sepsis. And then when we're coding a non-infectious process, like maybe the person was in some kind of traumatic accident and led to an infection that resulted in sepsis or severe sepsis, we're going to code meeting the following guidelines. So if severe sepsis is present, a code from subcategory R65.2 is also assigned with the organ dysfunction code. We don't have to code R65.1, which is systemic inflammatory response syndrome of non-infectious origins for these cases. Another common thing that we code from this section is MRSA, right? So MRSA stands for methicillin resistant staphylococcal aureus. So when we have a patient that's diagnosed with an infection that's due to MRSA, there are some times going to be a combination code. So a combination code includes two conditions in one code. That's why it's called a combination code. So for example, there might be, um, say, sepsis due to meth methicillin resistant staphylococcal aureus, right? That's MRSA in one code. So J15.212, if you open up your ICD-10 CM tabular to J15.212, you'll see the description is pneumonia due to MRSA. So we don't need two codes there. We don't have to code MRSA and pneumonia separate. We can do it all together in one code. That's called a combination code. But sometimes we're not going to be able to do a combination code. So if we can't do a combination code, then we're going to code that condition and then the MRSA infection as well. And then there's also MSSA, which is methicillin susceptible staphylococcal aureus. So when we're coding that, there's carrier codes for both MSSA and MRSA. So the carrier codes would be indexed under carrier in your ICD-10-CM index, but they're codes Z22.321 and Z22.322. The other code line, coding guideline we have to know about from the infectious disease area is the Zika virus, right? Which that's something we've heard a lot more recently about. So when you're coding the Zika, Zika virus, again, we only code confirmed cases. Just like our HIV and AIDS, this is separate 
from what we're used to when we're, we're thinking of inpatient coding, we can code probable, likely, suspected. We cannot with the Zika virus, just like we cannot with the HIV. So you only can code confirmed cases, and we code that with A92.5. One thing I wanna highlight is when you're coding the organism, the infection itself, if you don't have a combination code like pneumonia due to, right? Like our pneumonia due to MRSA that we just had, that we're gonna look up under pneumonia. But if you don't have a, a combination code that you're looking up, look in your ICD-10 CM index under infection because you're coding the organism. So go to infection and then go find the organism itself under the term infection in your index. So let's do a couple examples. I have two. So our first one is a 37-year-old discharged today after a two-day stay for acute cystitis due to MRSA. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is see if this is a combination code, right? So we're going to go to our, the front of our book, the front of our CM book, we're going to look up cystitis. So once you get to cystitis, see if you can find MRSA or the methicillin resistant staphylococcal aureus there. Okay, hopefully you guys are all at cystitis and you can see if we go to the M's, there's nothing for MRSA. So we can't do a combination code. We're gonna have to code each separately. So after I go to cystitis, then we have to pick the code. So we do know our cystitis is acute. So under your indented terms of cystitis, go down to acute and we can see our code is N30.00. So let's flip to N30.00 in our tabular. We always verify our code here, right? We read any inclusion or exclusion notes. So at N30.00, I see a two cystitis without hematuria, which our chart did not say our patient had hematuria. So that's what we're going to code. At the top, if you look at N30, where it says cystitis at the top, it says use additional code to identify infectious agent. We know our infectious agent, right? You, you may not always know, but we do know in this case, we know it's MRSA. So like I told you, we're gonna go to infection to MRSA. Just for fun, if you wanted to try to look up MRSA by going to methicillin, you can try it, but you can't find it there. So you're gonna have to go to I in your CM index, go to I and then to infection, and then go down to methicillin and you can either see resistant staphylococcus or susceptible staphylococcus or both right there i'll give you just a minute and see if you can find those Okay, I wanna point something out. How many of you went to infection and then went to M, methicillin, and then went to resistant staphylococcal aureus, MRSA, and got A49.02? Okay, so again, you always verify in the index. So if we go to A49.02 in our tabular, it says methicillin resistant staphylococcal aureus infection unspecified site. Ooh, that's not what we want, right? Because we know our sites. We know it's the bladder, acute cystitis. So we're gonna go back to infection and now we're gonna go to staphylococcal. So go to S. And then we're gonna pick aureus and methicillin resistance. And you should see B. 95.62. So now let's take that B95.62 
and look that up in our tabular. So this one reads, if we look at the top category B95 to B97, it tells us these categories are provided for use as supplementary or additional codes to the infectious agent and diseases classified elsewhere. So we know we're in the right spot because our disease is cystitis, right? The reason we're here is the cystitis. Now, what caused it was the MRSA. So if we go down to our code, the B95.62, it tells us methicillin-resistant staphylococcal aureus infection as the cause of diseases classified elsewhere. Perfect. Now, some of the books might have the AHA um, colon 2016-1Q12. That is a coding clinic reference. So if you have access to coding clinic through an encoder like 3M, you can go look at this coding clinic and it gives you more advice on how to code a condition with MRSA. So that's, if you ever see that reference, that's what it is. It's to the, the coding clinic, which is an invaluable tool. So our codes for this case are N30.00 and B95.62. Okay, I have one more case really fast. So this patient is a 27 year old today, seen today for sepsis. The blood cu cultures grew group A streptococcus. The discharge diagnosis is group A strep sepsis. So what are we going to look up? Hopefully you guys are saying sepsis right? That's our condition. That's the disease. The group A strep is what's causing it, but that's not what we go to first. We're going to go to sepsis. So in your ICD-10 CM index, alphabetical index, go to S and then to sepsis. And group A is a type of streptococcus, right? So strep is just the short version. So we're going to go to sepsis and then streptococcus. And under sepsis streptococcus, you should see group A and our code is A40.0. So then go to your tabular and verify that code. So let's go to A40.0. Sepsis due to streptococcus group A. Perfect. There's nothing there's a code first if we have any one of those conditions, which we didn't. There's a coding clinic reference again, 2016, first quarter, page 32, if we want to read that. But our code is going to be the A40.0. I hope you found this helpful. And remember, practice is the key.